Today, we are going to talk about inverses of a quadratic function, and we're going to talk about domain restrictions. So what we've learned about so far with inverses is when we have an equation, okay, first we're going to rewrite it, and we're going to replace f of x with the y value. So we rewrite it with the y value. Now, an inverse means that we're going to flip the x and y. They're going to switch places. So this x and y that you see here, we're just going to flip places, and we're going to say that x equals 2, y plus 1 squared plus 4. Now, our job is going to be to solve for y for the inverse. So we have this equation now that we want to solve for y. So first, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. We have x minus 4 equals y plus 1 squared. Well, how do we get rid of a square on there? Well, in order, the opposite, the opposite of squaring something is to take the square root. So I'm going to take the square root because the square root and the square will cancel each other out. And I'm left with the square root of x minus 4 equals y plus 1. And the last thing to do is to subtract 1 from both sides. And now you can put this after the square root or you can put this in the front. That's just teacher preference. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the end. So the square root of x minus 4 minus 1 equals y. This is the inverse equation, but this is not a function. And I'm going to graph it, and I'm going to look at the plus and the minus square root. So this is considered the full inverse. This is a multi-valued function right here because I'm actually looking at the positive and the negative. And if you notice here, I actually had to graph two different lines. And we'll explain why in the future. So I had to graph this top positive one and I had to graph this bottom one. So what we know about inverses is that inverses are a reflection over y equals x. If I fold my graph over this red line, they are going to be mirror reflections over each other because the x and y values just switch places. Okay. So my domain of all quadratics is negative infinity to infinity. And inverses are going to switch domains and ranges. So the domain of my function is the range of my inverse. Okay. Now what is my range of the function? My lowest value is 4. So my range is going to be 4 to infinity. And if I look at my inverse, my domain is 4 to infinity. So remember that the domain of your function is the range of the inverse. And the range of your function is the domain of the inverse. It's not a function. It does not pass the test. So how do we make the inverse a function? So if I just did the square root of x, this is a function. This does pass a vertical line test. But as you notice, this is not a complete reflection over y equals x. And my domain does not match anymore because my domain was all real numbers. But look at the domain of this one. It's not all real numbers. So this is not a reflection. So this is not the complete inverse. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to restrict the domain. So you see we're going to restrict the domain to only half of the graph. That way, this is a reflection over, so here's my reflection right here, over y equals x. It does mirror over that, so I can only look at half of my quadratic. So I'm going to start at the vertex, so I need to find my vertex right here, and I'm only going to go to the right of my quadratic. So let's look at that. So we're going to go ahead and find that inverse my first step is to rewrite it with the y in place of f of x. The next step is going to be to flip the x and y. Now the next major step is to go ahead and solve for y. So first we're going to move the 1 over by adding 1 to both sides because this will be 0. So we have x plus 1 is equal to y plus 3 squared. 
So now what is the opposite of squaring something? How do I get rid of squaring? I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. So now I'm left with the square root of x plus one is equal to y plus three. So then to move the negative three to the other side, I'm gonna subtract three from both sides. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and put this after the radical. Now, I'm, I am gonna replace the y with an f of x, okay? Now, this is an inverse, so we replace it with the inverse of the function is equal to. So let's talk about this domain and range. We aren't gonna look at negative infinity to infinity anymore. So the first step is to find your vertex. What is your vertex? So our vertex is negative three, negative one. So this value right here is where I'm going to restrict my domain. So my domain is now gonna start at negative three and my domain is going to go to infinity, okay? which means the range of my inverse is now negative three to infinity, which makes sense because if you look at this D value out here, this made my square root graph go down three, which affected my range. Now, the range of my original is negative one and the graph is facing up. So my range is negative one to infinity which means my domain of my inverse is negative one to infinity, okay? Just look at those graphs, the answers are there. Um, you can have it, the answers in any quality form or you can have them in interval notation. So I want you guys to look at these graphs. When I restricted my domain, it was this half right here. And now this is a mirror image over y equals x. So make sure you write this one down you're going to restrict the domain, okay, by restricting it to your x of your vertex, okay? This is your vertex right here, that negative three, negative one. So I'm only doing half of my quadratic that starts after negative three. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Let's see how you do. First of all, I want you to find the inverse function. So pause this video here and try to find that inverse function on your own. Okay, let's check how you did. So first, I had to switch the x and y, and then my goal was to solve for y. So I subtracted two from both sides. After I subtracted two, I had to take the square root since this side was squared. So once I took the square root, then I was able to add one to the other side. And again, I put it at the end, this plus one can be in front of the radical. That's just a person or a teacher preference. And so then I rewrite it as the inverse function is equal to the square root of x minus two, all of that plus one. So my vertex here is what helps me with my domain restriction. My vertex of the quadratic, I'm gonna restrict the domain to only the right side. So I had to restrict my domain from one to infinity. So my domain is when x is greater than or equal to one, you can write it either way. And my range is gonna be y is greater than or equal to two. The graph was facing up since a is positive, and this is why it's going from two to infinity. Remember that the domain of my function is equal to the range of the inverse of the function. We just change it from x to y. And same thing with the range and domain. The range of your function is equal to the domain of your inverse function. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to 2. Now we can look at the graph of it so we can discuss that domain restriction that we had. Okay, so now when we look at this graph, we can see that this is a reflection. Remember, the whole point of the inverse is that it is a reflection over the line y equals x. So here is where it should reflect over. And as you can see, it did mirror over that image. So that vertex that we restricted was right here. So we had to say that x is greater than or equal to 1. So my domain starts at 1 and it goes to infinity. And so we flipped them, so then we look at this red one, you see the range? The range starts at one, and the range is gonna go up to infinity. 
So hopefully this video helped you understand how to restrict the domain so that, so that the domain of the function is the range of the inverse function. Our goal here was that our inverse was a function, which is why we could not use the whole reflection.